Divers Sink is a weekly netcast where we talk about the world of scuba diving, fantastic diving opportunities, and some of the happenings in the underwater world. We also provide tips and discussions about scuba diving and get excited about upcoming dives and adventures. Learn how you can join us on our dives and become part of the program by following Divers Sync on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, or by visiting our website at www.diversync.com. Hello and welcome to Divers Sync, the netcast and podcast for scuba divers. My name is Rich Sinowick and you're listening to episode 519 recorded on the 11th of January 2024 and I have just returned pretty much from a month in Bonaire teaching Tech 100, Tech 60, Tech 40, all the uh, the rebreather stuff that you could hopefully imagine. Um, the uh, idea behind it all was that I was going to come down here and make a make a month of of just teaching and then I was going to have a vacation with my family but it ended up being a whole lot more teaching and a whole lot more than I thought because uh, I, I volunteered for stuff and it was just really cool but the problem is is that I went down there I had uh if for those of you guys that have seen the the video that I put together on the Garmin the one that was in the dive shop we had uh, I, I was experimenting with technology and it came out really well and I was so excited when I got into uh, Bonaire. I was I actually went down with a whole extra bag filled with the stuff that I would use to video and film and, and share things with all of you. And I, I, I I'm a Gen Xer, so we've always been ones that think out of the box, but we've also been ones that were late coming to the party when it came to technology. So when it was technology failed me on this day after day and the first thing that failed was that i had a camera microphone set up and what my plan was was to sit down every morning and chat with you guys while i put my rebreather together because my my days are pretty much uh get up make a cup of coffee pack a scrubber assemble and go through my unit sit down with my notes and figure out the day let the divers show up whether it's a day of fun diving or whether it's got people that have to wake up or people have to go through their own rebreathers or their own dive gear because we had open circuit people with us too. And the other thing that was cool was I was hoping that I would be able to share my 1,000th dive on my Prism 2 with you guys. And uh, that hasn't happened yet. I'm at 980-something. Um, but the... Uh, but the deal was was that technology kept failing me. The first time technology failed me was in the form of the camera microphone system didn't work. And then technology didn't fail me, but weather did. And the next every morning it would get I would get up to rain. And so that makes electronics and rain don't don't go well. And then uh, after my tech um, 60 class, I did a tech 100 class and on the last dive of that tech 100 class, uh, one of the buttons stopped working on my handset for my computer on my rebreather, and it was 961 or 963. I'm actually going to do um, some, some if you guys follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and all that, I'm going to actually do something on that. It's just it's in the back burner. I was, I'm kind of waiting to see how Shearwater handles um, my repairs. They're always good to me, but it's a lot of times where we're – it's supposed to be rated to a certain depth and then they come back and oh it's just only rated that depth if you don't have a thousand dives on it so i'm okay with that i, I got my, my time out of it but i want to make sure that i got the story straight before i go rah 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 and the wrong thing i mean they're great but it's one of those things so anyway i uh i had technology issues with that i had technology issues with the camera i had technology issues um one of my buddies we ended up the whole uh the whole trip the death toll was two Shearwater handsets, a Shearwater dive computer, a um, Garmin watch almost, and I'll tell you a little bit about that because that's exciting in a second, um, a, a two HUDs, one was replaced under warranty, 
Um, the uh, and then uh, four six inch high pressure hoses, literally four of them burst. And uh, that was just, I mean, started leaking profusely, all that. And I've gotten way, I, I push my gear way harder than I should. And it's 100 dives, 200 dives for some manufacturers, but it's 100 dives for service intervals or a year or two years, depending on the surface the thing. And I don't, I do the year on religiously, but you're supposed to also change all your hoses out. You're supposed to make some changes to some of the plastic stuff every five years and i do that on my rebreather but i don't really do that on my regular gear and that's on me but um the garmin almost i gotta tell you um there's days when you wake up and 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 i've lived my life pretty much with the understanding that i'm the luckiest guy on the on the planet and i have my ups and downs and and the ups and downs come because i'm a business owner and i have a group dynamic and there's always people in and out of my life but the ups and downs come. But most of the time, it's trending upwards. And I was, uh, I, 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 the, 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 I was diving with my family and a client. And we were doing a um, relatively shallow dive. Um, we were going down and we were doing a dive to um, uh, 120 feet. Uh, maximum depth and uh, I think it was part of the yeah it was part of the last dive of the tech 40 last or second to last dive of the tech 40 in the tech 40 instructor course and I get out to the edge of the reef and my Garmin descent mark 3 is no longer on my wrist and it is probably by far the best computer I've ever owned it's my third one because through the product testing we had to turn them back but this was the one that I had done all the videos on and I had done all my stuff and I, I really loved it. I had finally gotten it so that it read me right because it has a whole lot of biometrics in it that, that lets you see if you're ready to go diving, lets you see how you're training, lets you see if your weight loss is doing anything, your pulse rate is doing anything. It's really, really awesome. But here it is. I came back from that dive and I was like, shit, it's gone. So I was hoping, I mean, I remembered putting it on, but I was hoping that in the rush of getting everybody in the water, because I, I do that, in the rush of getting everybody in the water, I was hoping I just left it on the back of my truck, which wasn't a big deal because there were people that were sitting this one out. But I was hoping I left it on the back of my truck. And nope, I didn't leave it on the back of my truck. It was gone. So I, uh, I went home, rinsed off my rebreather, and... I said to my daughter, I said, uh, I mean, I said to my family, I said, guys, I need somebody to come back with me. I want to go look for that watch because it's out there in the ocean somewhere. And so I went out with my single tank and my open circuit gear and the watch wasn't there and I couldn't find it. And, and, and I looked for an hour, went through the whole tank, went from the point that I got in to the point that I went out. And sometimes and the, and the sand, during the shallows in the sand, the sand gets stirred up by the waves and, and, and it's visibility shit. So if I dropped it right away, which is usually where you drop stuff, it was gone. So here I was, there was my backup computer. I brought backups for the backups, but I was just sad because this was a piece of equipment that I was seriously excited about. It was brand new to the market. It was something that I could be really happy with. And I've already segued that I'm the luckiest guy alive, so you know there's a happy ending to this. So I get back to the dive center, at VIP diving, and uh, Jonathan, the, the, um, the, one of the guys there, he, he suggests, him and Kevin suggest that I load it up onto the um, Bonaire board. Well, what I did was I asked every group that was getting in the water while I was out there, hey guys, if you find it, please drop it off at VIP diving. They'll know how to get it to me. Um, I just, I'm sick that I lost it, but, but it was that. So the next day, the next morning, I asked everybody if we could go do that dive again. <clears throat> and um, as, cause it didn't really matter where our site was just in case I could run into it again and no luck, but another group was getting in the water right after us. And I told them the whole thing. Well, the next day I, uh, I'm, I'm teaching another course and I'm getting into a different course. And, um, I get a phone call through Facebook and it's VIP diving and uh, it's Jonathan telling me that I'm the luckiest son of a bitch on the planet because somebody had turned it in. You see, Bonaire has a, uh, 
a page that you can go on. And I'm sure there's other places. This is a great idea. I do it at White Star, but I never thought that you'd do it on an island. But people post what they've lost or post what they've found. And so someone went on there, found that I was looking for this, and now they're the happy owner of a bottle of rum because I got my Descent Mark III back. And uh, it made a 10-hour dive before the battery died. And then when it came out of the water, the battery turned back on, and it did a one-minute dive in a rinse tank, it looks like. And then uh, I got it back on my wrist. So um, pretty neat uh, that, that people are like that. And, and kudos if you are that kind of a person. Um, it also goes with make sure that you put your name on stuff, guys. There's no real place to put your name on a Garmin. But if you called Garmin, they would probably tell you where it is because it was registered. But if you have everything registered and you have all this, you have a chance of getting everything back, which is what the ultimate thing is. So uh, my family was there, so I had agreed with my family that I, because I was going down there and I was teaching a bunch of people, and lo and behold, some people showed up, some people didn't, and, and that's a completely different podcast. That would be something that would be about how to run your business, which I, I'm not entirely adverse to the fact that I may end up, because I got to do a Divers Inc., a Divers Incorporated, I want to start doing a Divers Incorporated podcast, and so I'm not entirely adverse to doing little snippets and that sort of thing but for the most part um the 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 uh the business model that i had for this one was i was going to go and do some service work that a little bit of store training and then a um whole shitload of uh certifications i had a a, a day and a half in between but it was like a, i started out with a tech 60 ccr course and then i jumped into a tech uh 40, I'm sorry, Tech 100 CCR course. And then I had a Tech 40 instructor course, Tech 40 CCR instructor course. And then we had the Tech 40 CCR course to go along with that. And that went really well. And then my family was going to be here. Well, I kind of volunteered. I said, hey guys, because because uh, the VIP diving had bought two Prism 2s for rental. And I kind of, we were using one of them for the class, and I kind of said, because as, as, as the whole class went, because I taught it at VIP Diving, everybody, all the staff and everybody was looking at it and going, man, that looks really, really cool. And I just kind of tongue-in-cheek said, hey, we can do a uh, Discover Rebreather if you want. Not thinking anybody would want to do it, not thinking we could fit it in the schedule, but, uh, but totally fine with the idea. Well, the funny thing is, is they had a customer that wanted to. So I taught a, so on one of my off days, I taught a Tech 40, or I'm sorry, a Tech a Discover Tech CCR, Discover CCR, Discover Prism 2. I taught that in their pool. And the idea is, is that you can get in the pool and then you can step out in the ocean. Well, the owners of VIP Diving, there's two guys in there, and the owners, um, they had uh, they had looked and they, they were like, this is cool. And I said, do you guys want to do this? And they were like, yeah, that would be just the most amazing thing ever. And so we went out there and we did, uh, we ended up doing a Discover Rebreather for them. And I'm going to tell you, the Discover Rebreather in the ocean is amazing. It's a little bit harder to keep people on track because you got depth, depth limits and, and all that kind of stuff, but it was amazing. And so when we got, what we did was we had issues with waiting at the beginning because the pool and the, the ocean, we kind of made a, a, a thing and, and it was kind of, a, we should have probably started a little bit heavier. And when we got there, we were talking about it. I was doing the debrief and the guys were like, man, we should have probably started heavy because both of them were, were instructor level. One was course director level, tech tech divers, all that kind of stuff. And so they were really, really understood buoyancy control after the first hour of diving this rebreather. And I'm like, guys, I got to dump these scrubbers when it's done. So if you want to do another one, let's go back at tanks filled and let's go back out. They're like, yes, okay, yeah, sure. So we went out and did another dive, another hour. And uh, they came back just pumped, thinking the world of this. So um, that's always good to get, get the owners of the company behind the technology I know that myself. I'm a little bit late coming to the party with technology, like I said. So while we were doing that dive, technology would be what it failed me. This time it was simple technology. I dive with a, no matter what I do, I dive with um, a, a uh, uh, sorry about my alarm, but I dive with a uh, Garmin Descent, I'm sorry, not Garmin Descent, Garmin InReach Mini in a dive case. And I dive that with every single student that I do because it is a communication that will get me connected to 911 or whoever emergency services everywhere in the world should something go wrong. So it has been pretty much in my pocket on every single dive that I've done or in my bag and pool dives even because I step outside, get a, get a satellite feed. Even if the power's out, I can get 911. 
And um, it's been in my pocket. And on the first dive of the the thing, it fell out of my pocket. And I'm like, oh, well, the clip's a little bit shot, it looks like. And I picked it up and put it back in my pocket. Didn't think anything of it. Went back, switched tanks, got it on the second dive of the Discover Rebreather. I dropped it. And I dropped it gone. So... This is the second piece of Darman gear that, that escaped me, and it was because I use a cheap clip. And I'm like, crap. Well, you know what? I'll just go get my single tank. I know this was really easy. We didn't go deeper than 15 feet. I know exactly where we went. And so as long as we go and do a couple of grids, we'll find it, because I knew exactly the path that we had done, because we had done it twice. Well, my daughter found it, so I was pretty pleased with that. She said she wanted a bottle of rum, and I said no. But it was still, um, uh, it was still a relief that that my luck was good for me twice. So uh, <clears throat> there was another thing that that happened on this that I kind of want to share with you, which is kind of a funny thing. I, uh, if you want to help out this podcast, ask questions and put things in the comments. And I'm going to tell you that if you want to help out anybody in social media, the new algorithm for social media, and people think, oh, we got to beat the algorithm. The algorithm is a reasonable assumption of what your audience wants so if you want to get if you're a social media influencer if you want to get customers you want to do this like i do um i i'm pretty much dialed into the new people to the old people to people who have been divers for a while most people if you're a new diver and you have never you have an interest in diving or if you are someone who has an absolute interest in diving and haven't taken that step yet i need to talk to you um, because I'm kind of doing a, a, a business analysis as I look to where my future is going to go and what I'm going to do. And the podcast is going to be part of it. But I also realize that I do a whole lot of things that they tell us to do in marketing and I'm reading books and reading articles. And they tell you to do all these things that I do really well. But I'm not doing it. I'm doing it really well to all you guys out there who are really avid divers who just want to get your fix for diving. You want to be reminded that this is why you're going to work every day. This is why everything's doing it. But I don't know very many people whose journey hasn't begun yet. And that's ultimately the customer that I want, right? But um, so if you're a person that wants to help me out, put in the comments what you like, post on things. If you see stuff, just like it, put in a comment. They want you to be, I mean, social media is now swinging back to the social, okay? When Facebook first came out and for I first got on it anyway, I think it'd been out for a while, but when I first got it in 2009, and for those of you guys that are keeping score, that is a long time ago. That's like 15 years ago now. But when 2009 came along and I started getting on it, it was really nice to get and chat with people that were in. Now it's become a big thing of noise and all that. We don't get to chat that much. But I want to, I am right now at a point where I can personally respond to almost every comment. I might not do it right away. But if you are that kind of a person, man, I want to talk to you. And uh, um, that's kind of, kind of, one of the things that's there. But the reason I brought this up was because the uh, my Tech 60 CCR class, when I got done with it, I posted all the pictures and the guy that was in it was an awesome guy. He took some really good pictures himself. He His, his understanding of how to dive the way that he, we were diving was very, very clean. And, and Jake was, was spectacular on it. But Jake asked me out, outright, he said, I would like to dive with a camera. And I said, after the first dive. All good. I don't have a problem with it. And for those guys that are out there going, oh, students hand dive with a camera. I'm going to say there's a couple people that are out there because I got back after posting that post. I got back after a day of diving and uh, there was an email in my inbox because I was not peri- I was only periodically checking email. But there was an email in my inbox from Patty Quality Assurance. And it turns out someone turned me in to Quality Assurance because I had posted a picture of of one of my students with a camera and for those of you guys that have listened to this podcast for a while you know there's nothing wrong with that i did not violate any standards but it turns out that patty if you go and you do something like that patty makes you address it even as a professional you have to address the fact that you understood that you weren't allowed to have a camera or you understood that you were allowed to have a camera or that the what they're trying to do is they're just in this case they're trying to say the perception is and I don't give a flying F about people's perception, okay? I hope it's good for me. But if you're going to sit there and be an armchair warrior, well, it turns out this dude, whoever did this, hates me so much, he wrote a four-page treatise to 
Patty to tell everybody how bad I was. And then he blew me up on social media. And then, thank God, there were other professionals and adults in the room because the pushback was so great on his anonymous post, he actually pulled it down. First thing first, if you're going to post anonymously, you're wrong. Period. End of discussion. You know nothing about what you want to do. You're wrong. And you can fight me on this in the, in the comments because if you're going to post anonymously, if you're not going to have the balls to get up there and tell people that it's you, I mean, it's it's kind of like if you're going to get up there and do that, you got to have – you can't. if you're going to be Facebook brave, you got to be real Facebook brave, okay? And and then that was that was on Facebook. But the funny thing is I learned a new, new term. He put it, posted it up there and then dirty deleted it. And I thought that was an interesting way of doing it. Somebody had told me about it. I don't follow that kind of stuff. But then I thought, man, I should be pitying this guy or girl. I'm pretty sure it's a guy. It's got to be one of four people because I only I have a very passionate um, <laughs> few people that, that that hate me. But on the uh, on the, the 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 flip side is the amount of venom a person needs to carry around where they think that it's okay to just try to destroy somebody on social media. I mean, if you have a problem with me, send me a message. Say, Rich, I have a problem with this. Help me understand where you're coming from. I'm not right. I don't make mistakes very often when it comes to standards anymore, knock on wood. But when it comes to to, to human interactions, I suck at candor. I suck at, 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 at I mean, I mean, it's like, it's like why sugarcoat it when you can cram it down their throat sideways is kind of more the way that I do it. And I also know that I have, for you guys that have been listening to my podcast for so long, you also know that I have a real thing where I jump from A to B to C and then to F, then to E, then back to B, then back out to D. So I don't really, I bounce a lot of ideas. I'm very passionate about what I do. Um, I was called a, in, a, in a coaching session just recently, I was called a visionary because I always look to the future and I'm not always grounded when I do that. And when I lose my grounding, I bounce all over the idea. So anyway, it was easily addressed. It turns out I didn't do anything wrong. And for you guys that want to know the standard this person thought I did, Patty has a standard that states that a instructor is not allowed to have a camera for a discover scuba diving or a dive one of the open water. That is the only place that there is a restriction on whether or not an instructor can touch a camera. In those two instances, we are not even allowed to touch a camera. Okay, we can have a camera in the water. We can have uh, somebody else that's in, uh, about it. And but this is where everybody gets it is there's a lot of people out there who don't have the control or don't have the mechanisms in place with their own personal way of doing things to allow a student to have a camera. And in the standard, and I've been over this a couple times, so forgive me if you've listened to the podcast and you've heard this before, but the standard applies to instructors only on those two dives. The student is allowed based on the instructor's discretion. Well, there's a whole lot of dive store owners, a whole lot of course directors, a whole lot of people that I talk to, including VIP diving, where we were talking about this as a discussion is they don't allow cameras in the water, period, on open water for students, okay? During open water discover scuba diving, they don't allow people in the water with them. And I don't remember if what they did. It's like dive one, dive two, dive three. They're allotted on dive four if they do a really good job. But they use it as a carrot, right? They use it as a carrot to say, if you do really good on your skills, I'll let you take a camera on the last dive. Me, if you bring the camera you're going to dive with the camera anyway. These guys that are deep diving, doing the Tech 40, Tech 60, Tech 100, they're, gonna, they're doing it because they want to take good pictures. They're doing it because they want to do stuff. So let me teach them in the, with, the, with all the equipment they're going to use. I mean, if they're not going to make sure that they're trim, they're not going to make sure they're trim afterwards. And if they're not going to drop the camera when I give them a drill to do it, then they're not going to drop the camera afterwards. So they need to know that they're, they're making poor choices. So... That's where, where I'm at. But it was all addressed other than <clears throat> there's people that are passionate about that. And if you're passionate about it, I'm not going to delete the post. I'm just going to answer it. So if you really want to lay into me, lay into me on this podcast. I don't care anymore. There is not a place where people have gotten where they can touch me. I mean, there's people that, that they can affect the business. They can people, people that. But if you're going to be affected on a Facebook post of whether or not I am there and you're not going to ask me about it, you know, Look at everything else around there. If you're going to look at product reviews, think of product reviews of what you do. And, and if you put a bad product review up there, you really need to know, did, did you give the person an opportunity to fix the problem? 
a couple of the reviews that we've got are people that had a four star, the one star review and they've never been in the store or a one star review or they put a four five star review because we did a really good time and then on dive five haven't seen him in two or three years they had an, an experience where they rented something and, and it was and, and they, they led back to we didn't do something right and they said i'm going to change it to a four star but they didn't give us an opportunity to fix it that's a sad thing but we are in a weird world right now so i'm not too concerned about it but i had an exceptional time teaching exceptional time diving with my family we got to dive the wind jammer twice i got to dive it twice i got to dive it with my family which was pretty awesome and then i got to dive it with a student which was really awesome and um jill got to dive it so my wife jill finally got she, it's the reason she said she got to, into tech 60 years ago was that she wanted to dive the wind jammer and she was so excited that she got to do that um our average dive was about 100 and um 119 minutes a little bit under two hours um most of the, the that includes some of the short stuff um there's going to be videos out there i've been posting some videos if you've been following me all over social media i've been posting them i'm hoping that i have time to put some video onto this podcast that you can look at the pictures and video um, I, i'm definitely going to have at least one or two or three pictures floating on this if you guys are listening to me on spotify um, come to youtube and and follow it and you guys if you're on youtube or you're on spotify or you're on facebook and all that and you find something do me the big favor of of, of doing all the things click the, the like buttons on the bottom click the follow click the subscribe button i'm not going to blow out a whole lot of stuff i i, I do a post a day that's my goal is on, on all platforms so if you follow me on everything, you might see the same post differently worded uh, because different platforms want different wording. Like LinkedIn, I have a, everything on LinkedIn. So you can sit there and say, I'm on LinkedIn, so I'll, I'm going to follow you. Um, I post some really cool pictures and some insights, but they're mostly business models. They're very professional. We're in Twitter. They're very short. In Instagram, they're very flowery. And in Facebook, uh, they're, they're everything. So um, I also have a Tumblr um, blog. Uh, we're going to actually dial that into a new face or new divers incorporated blog that's coming up, but that's there too. But uh, follow all that. And, and um, your dive centers, this is January. I mean, I was really sorry that I didn't get something. I really am focused on trying to get every two weeks is what I'm trying to get with this thing. I would have if, oh, that's the technology bringing it full circle before I get done with this is I had my family coming down. So I went down there with all these things that the first two weeks I was going to do all these podcasts and all this social media content, with, but my technology didn't work. So I called my wife or I sent my wife a text and said, I need you to order this, this, and this and bring it down with you so that I can return this piece of junk that just, just died. And uh, the one that came didn't work either. So I ended up switching companies when I got home, but it's too late now for, for what I want to do. I'll just have to go to Bonaire again. And uh, we're going to Utila in, uh, in in three months and in, uh, in, in March. And if you uh, want to join, there's just there's people spots that have just opened up for that. Um, if you want to go to Utila, the uh, other thing that's that's uh, that's that there, there, there's there's six spots, I think, left now. Um, some people didn't get their deposit in as, on time, so they're, they're, they're now getting backed out. But the. Uh, the, the we're going to do rebreather diving we're going to do open circuit diving down there if you're an open circuit diver they take care of all your stuff which is kind of nice and, and that's coming up but i'm also putting together my summer schedule and if you're thinking about rebreather i've got some exciting stuff to go um I, I think i talked about it but i don't know that i did but you can now start rebreather diving with less experience so if you have as little as 25 dives you can become a rebreather diver now there's a lot of limitations on that level but you can become a redo the diver so um Anyway, I wanted to get something out there. I'm running short on time because everything in my business is is always on it, and I'm making it a, a real effort to, for the new year, do this every two year, weeks, and I'm already three weeks into it, so maybe I'll see you next week. So uh, until next time, um, I appreciate you guys listening. Please co comment something. Please tell me what you want to hear. Please tell me how you want to change the podcast if you can. Um, I'm going to start revisiting. I finished a project um where I uh, was able to, um, I'm going to be able to revisit a lot of the old podcast notes that did really, really well. And uh, they're all dialed into what I said and uh, be able to do blogs and things like that based on the old podcast. And I'm going to start talking about repeat stuff because I have people say, hey, you know what? I don't remember which podcast it is that you talked about split fins, but I want you to do that again. And I'm like, okay. But if you, I mean, you can message me. I, I'm right now on Diver Sync's Facebook page. I am the guy that replies to the direct messages. On all the other ones, we have a team that does it. But uh, but but um, 
Divers Sync Facebook, and then I answer the comments eventually on Divers um, Inc. and Divers Sync's uh, YouTube page. So uh, again, if you are a person who has never learned how to dive and you're on this podcast and you're this far into it, man, you've got passion. I want to talk to you. So uh, hopefully we can we can do that. Until next time, guys, though, I am excited about the new year. Happy New Year, and we'll see you. Divers Sync is a cooperation between Divers Incorporated and Divers Media Group. You can download archived past editions worldwide over the internet at diversync.com. If you wish to support Divers Sync financially, you can find us on Patreon for bonus content, announcements of live performances, product giveaways, and other opportunities to be part of the program. Help us promote our netcast by telling your friends and dive buddies to subscribe to Divers Sync on YouTube and Spotify. The opinions that you hear on Divers Sync are not necessarily those of any station, website, network, or advertiser. These netcasts are not intended to substitute for professional diver training. Scuba diving does involve risk and should never be attempted without the proper instructions, supervision, and training. Have any questions or comments? We'd love to hear from you. We are on Facebook and Instagram for messages, or you can email us via our website at diversync.com.